Hey everybody, this is my 20 gallon open top angelfish tank and today we're going to get in there and do a little bit of maintenance. I'm about to do a chemiclean treatment on the cyanobacteria in this tank but I used up the last of my chemiclean treating my garami tank right now. So it's going to be about a week before my new order of chemiclean arrives and so what we're going to do in the meantime is we're going to manually remove as much of the cyanobacteria as I can. If you'll notice in this tank we've got the blue-green, uh, it's called blue-green algae but it's not really algae, some people call it blue-green slime, but it is in fact cyanobacteria. And if we look at it from this end you can see how it grows in sort of sheets or mats across the surface. So what I'm going to do is get in there first and we're going to get the glass cleaned down so we can actually see what we're doing. I'm going to remove some of my water sprite here to allow more light into the tank and then I'm going to set up the tripod and we will have a look at me removing the cyanobacteria off the bottom with a siphon and you can get a lot of it out of there uh, by doing it that way. So let me get started and we can talk more about that once I'm actually in there and doing it. All right, everybody, I hope that gives you a good enough look at what we're doing. So what we're doing with the siphon is just a vinyl hose. There's no uh, gravel vac on the end where it's got the larger, wider area that prevents the flow of water from being too rapid. In this case, I want the flow of water to be very rapid. If you get just close enough to the edge, it will lift it up in sheets. Now it's going to be sort of lightly attached to the superficial substrate. So it is going to pull some substrate out of the tank. There's just no way I can avoid that. It's not a big deal because I can simply recover the substrate sterilize it in a variety of very simple ways. I'm only going to have maybe a couple of tablespoons worth of substrate in the bottom of the bucket when I'm done here and that can easily be sterilized and then just put back in the tank. So not a big deal in that regard but you do need to be a little bit careful if you get a little overzealous with it and a little careless you'll suck up too much substrate all at once and then it'll clog up the siphon and you have to sort that all out and get started again. Now the thing in the back that I just sucked up did have green cyanobacteria growing on it but it's a small plant that grows back there. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's uh, subwasser tang. I'm not exactly sure if I'm pronouncing that properly. Let's see I just got a big chunk of something stuck in there and it's got me fairly well clogged up. That's just a wad of substrate so you do have to be careful and I am actually getting pretty close to the bucket getting full at this point. And I'm having a little bit of trouble actually seeing what I'm scooping up back here. I'm also trying to get some of the mulm out of these little nooks and crannies when I've got this nice narrow end. But again, you got to be careful with the amount of suction you get in an open hose like this, much, much more uh, suction force than when you've got that wide mouth of the gravel vac. So that's all we're going to worry about today with the uh, cyanobacteria. I will get in there and finish up this last little bit of glass. I didn't want to disturb the bottom too much uh, while I was getting the tank prepped. So let me get that done. I'll get the tank filled back up. We'll change the filter and then we'll have one final look at it for the end of the video. All right, everybody, there's the finished product. So I actually wound up getting back in there once I finished the first uh, vacuuming and I was filling the tank back up. I noticed there was a lot of areas where I had missed some large chunks of the cyanobacteria and there was just sort of a general film of it over some other areas and in the back there was a few areas that I missed 
and even on the rocks you could actually see sheets of it growing across there so I wound up doing a second bucket while it was filling back up so I kind of did a 10 gallon water change but not exactly since I was running water into the tank as I was draining it out at the same time for the second bucket but it did amount to a significant water change probably close to a 50 percent so I tested the nitrates after the water change and they are about 10 parts per million so this is another tank that's got really low nitrates at least by my standards and this is the total amount of substrate I wound up pulling out of the tank. That is actually soaking in hydrogen peroxide right now. That's why it looks sudsy. That's not soap bubbles. That's just oxygen bubbles. So I'll let it soak in that. I could even put it in the microwave and just run it for a minute or two until it was good and hot. And that would sterilize it again. There's plenty of ways to sterilize that and get it cleaned off before putting it back in the tank and ultimately I didn't sterilize the tank I just removed large chunks of the visible colonies of the cyanobacteria you can see that green ridge on the glass in the bottom down there uh, even in the front there's some areas that I missed and of course you know uh, the cyanobacteria is a single cellular organism and it grows in colonies that's what those sheets are so as long as there's a single organism left it will just start reproducing and you know so I didn't sterilize this tank so the idea of being super uh, careful about sterilizing the substrate before I put it back in the tank it's just not that important and as I said I am going to be treating this tank for cyanobacteria in the near future although I gotta say now that I've done this once again it's kinda you know defeats the purpose of doing it the cyanobacteria treatment with the chemiclean is just lickety split nice and easy and when I'm done I can do a gravel vac and that stuff comes out of there a lot more easily than it did today but it's basically the same process I just sort of kill it first and then I vac it out so in this case I vac it out without killing it first the end result is pretty similar and now it's going to be quite a while before I have to worry about actually using the chemically treatment so there you go that was a look at a mechanical way to remove cyanobacteria rather than going the chemical route again it's not a big deal it's not complicated that was not much more um, involved than just a normal water change you know it's just part of aquarium maintenance part of tank maintenance I gotta get in here and do water changes anyway so every so often I have to do a slightly different water change and that's that's it you know that's that's the extent of me you know fussing over the cyanobacteria it's just not a big deal it really isn't so there you go I'm gonna say thanks for watching and make sure you're subscribed don't forget this one is my 20 gallon angelfish tank although we haven't seen much of the angelfish in this video it's hiding over here in the corner at the moment but there you go thanks again I'll see you real soon in the next one